Start game now. Greetings, retro fans. This is the No Swear Gamer back with more retro goodness. Today, me and Gizmo Duck will be unboxing a very nice lot of Atari 7800 stuff. It is very rare to find a lot this size consisting entirely of the Atari uh, 7800 game systems and whatnot, because typically you'll have a lot of 2600 games mixed in. Uh, but this one is all 7800. It did come with the system, but why I got this was some of the games. There's been some games that I've been wanting to play again for a long time. When I was a young lad, the first system I bought new was a 7800. I chose it over the Nintendo Entertainment System, basically due to due to price. Most Nintendo games were like 40, 50 bucks. You could buy uh, Atari 2600 games, which played on the 7800, very cheap, and new games for the 7800 were typically in the 20 or $30 range. So being uh, a kid who did not have lots of money, uh, that's where I went. And actually, to this day, the 7800 holds a special place in my heart. So let's get to it. The first thing, of course, is the system. It is the Atari 7800 Pro System. Not to be confused with the amateur system, this nice shiny thing is the Pro System. I like the silver. I like the little rainbow going across this. Very nice and sharp. You know, uh, when they first came out with the 2600, it had a nice kind of wood grain feel, which kind of was the signs of the times. And now we have the silver, the metallic feel, which was the late kind of 80s and 90s kind of feel. So very sleek system. This one looks rather clean. You got a power button, a pause button. This is actually how I learned what the word pause meant. You got the pause button to pause your games. Uh, select and start, so uh, or select and reset, which of course the one downside of the 7800 is that the pause and select buttons are on the system rather than the controller. So every time you wanted to pause your game, you had to actually get up and push the button. But you know, you got used to it. it has the uh, con nice controller ports here with the difficulty switches, seem to be working just fine. You could actually plug a Sega Genesis controller in there and one button would function. I think it was the B, bunk, uh, B button. So if your game only required the one main button, you could play with a Sega Genesis controller. And here we have the backside with the uh, serial number and a nice little, uh, I guess, a seal of Atari there in a, in a language, I guess. Not sure if that's Spanish or not, but... Uh, there it is. And uh, what's interesting too is, I don't know if you can tell, but right here on the bottom, you have these kind of edges where you could actually wrap around your power cord. So here's where you put your cable, and uh, there's the power thing, which you'll notice is an unusual thing. Most power cables are rounded, but Atari, when they came out with their systems early on, they tended to have kind of unusual power cords. I remember the power cord from the for the uh, 2600 was shaped like a headphone jack at the end and this one here you go Atari guide Ooh, this must be a new newer plug but let's see if I can find the end of this you can see the end of this is not rounded it has that kind of interesting shape to it so uh, here we go not the original plug but I'm sure it's going to work hopefully we'll be trying that out later so here is the 7800 system the first part of this beautiful lot and its power supply let's see what we have next I believe we have yeah we have the Atari 7800 controllers two of them I believe the system came with two I can't remember for sure but I'll take one out to show you I'd like to show you what might be one of the worst first party controllers ever invented um, has this kind of joystick thing that goes with it you hold in your hand like this it can cause cramping because it's so slender you have your two buttons on the side so uh, yeah I mean it didn't not really uh, I mean it works for some things but uh, I would rather use a regular Atari 2600 joystick or even better a Sega Genesis pad when I play my games but if you need two buttons you're probably going to have to go with this they made another model in Europe that is very nice but those tend to go for quite a bit more money it was more like a joypad like the Nintendo but there you go kinda of looks like a phaser I don't know if you know the game zillion for the Sega Master System but this kinda of reminds me of the phaser but it's not a phaser but there you go 
two pro line controllers not to be confused with the amateur line controllers those were just for kids this is for the pros all right so got the controllers let's put those to the side and see what else we have all right oh sorry gizmo duck forgot about you you can be over there all right uh here we go now in a previous video um i did an unboxing of some atari 2600 and 7800 games i talked about pull position that they released separately this is the one that came with it you could tell it came with the system because of the the black and white label and that says pole position I believe the uh, one that they sold separately had a picture silver label on it so pole position 2 kinda stuck out pretty good game racing game interesting choice for pack-in uh, do have the instructions and there is the RF switch so instructions are just a couple pages not that fancy and the instructions drivers start your engines so there you go a little bit of artwork and of course your old school RF switch which kiddies in case you didn't know you'd actually plug this into your TV some had these weird things where you had to actually unscrew this and hook this in there would be your coax cable and every time you want to play a game you would have to switch it from TV to computer back to TV you do not know how good you could have it you guys which with uh, your fancy HDMI cables and your RCA cables those are the uh, red white and yellow ones for those who don't know so there you go the RF switch I will not be using that I use a special adapter that goes straight into the coax in the back of your TV alright now the reason why I bought this and I actually paid quite a bit of money for this lot more a lot more than my last lot the last lot of Atari 26 and 7800 games I did came out to about two dollars a game this is a lot more than that I won't tell you how much but let's just say it was a lot more but it did come with lots of games and most of them are in their boxes let's see what we got and some of them are brand new first up we have brand new sealed crossbow based I believe on an arcade shooter uh, owned this game back in the day was very fun if you had an Atari XC light gun that was a kind of more of a computerized system Atari made you could plug that gun in and play this game you have these guys they're traveling across the all across the screen going from left to right your job is to protect them so right here this guy right here I have to protect him from these boulders that are coming out of the volcano you want to have someone alive there's a bigger party your party can grow you want to protect everyone because if they all die that's the end I believe this eye was like the bad guy looking in at you and you could uh, actually shoot that eye maybe for bonus points and you could choose your paths here this is kind of an overview screen decide where to go it is an epic adventure and as it says for your pro line controller or the light gun so yep here you go very nice artwork kind of cheesy but kind of cool at the same time like the little dude here hey don't forget about the treasure so there you go crossbow for the 7800 all right that's the first one another new inbox game summer games the Atari advantage collect games earn stuff so that means it has a nice poster inside so um, yeah I remember this style right here of, uh, of graphics because it was used by a computer company epics right there epics had a good uh, partnership with Atari they actually I believe developed the Atari Lynx and Atari bought it off of them but some of their computer games like summer games made it to the uh, the Atari 7800 so um, yeah, this was a pretty fun game, at least back in the day, where you'd go through different events, you could score points, pick what country you're from. They'd even, I think, if I remember right, they'd actually play your national anthem. And, yeah, there was an opening uh, ceremony. Isn't that kind of neat? I mean, it wasn't much. Someone lit the torch and some doves flew out, but there you go. Summer games. You could do all sorts of stuff. Uh, play, uh, I mean, they're showing some of the activities they're doing here. Superb state of the art. Six different sport events. Uh, let's see. We have diving, 400 meter track relay, 100 meter dash, gymnastics, freestyle relay, and freestyle swimming. And they show a guy with a gun for no apparent reason because I don't see skeet shooting in that. So there you go. Summer games. I actually think winter games is a little better, but summer games can be fun too. Okay, here we go. Hat trick. Another super game cartridge. 
Again, uh, as I said in the other video, I'm not quite sure what Super meant. I think it may have been the size. It may have been slightly bigger, you know, like other game companies, especially in the 16-bit era, would say like 16 meg. So I think Super just meant that uh, had more, more memory. Uh, yeah, so Hat Trick, of course, hockey game, was basically one-on-one -on -one hockey. Uh, well, two on one because you got one player on each team and the goalie and you actually control both at the same time. So you kind of have to split your attention uh, back and forth depending uh, if you're more on the offensive or the defensive side because if you push up on the controller, both guys will go up and if you push down, both guys will go down. It's a fun little game. It's based on an arcade, an arcade game. Let's see if it says Bally. So I guess Bally made this one. Uh, and interesting here, one shot shows the actual gameplay. The other shows uh, kind of the intermission in between periods where the Zamboni would come and clean the ice. So actually, you know, at that time, that was kind of like a neat little feature because in the 2600 uh, era, you didn't really have intermissions. And now with the 7800 Super Game cartridges, you could do those little cinematics or intermissions in between levels. So there you go. Ice Hockey Hat Trick. It's a Super Game cartridge. Don't know how super it is, but there it is. It's not NHL good, but it still can be fun. This is a really neat one. Ball Blazer. Again, another Atari Advantage. This was made by Lucas Film. Same guys behind like Star Wars and whatnot. So you could say this is a relative of Star Wars. This had really amazing 3D effects for the time. And I believe it's one of the biggest games, if I'm not mistaken. But you could play one or two players. You got a split screen. So first player's on top. Seconds on the bottom, you're trying to shoot your ball into the goal. Each one of you has a pod. You go on this checkered field, and you could go forwards, backwards, side to side in this really smooth 3D environment. One day, I will have to review this game. Uh, the very nice copy right here, brand new. Uh, I, I would say that this is a highly recommended game. I don't think it came out for any other, at least American system. It may have came out of computers, but... Ball Blazer, it's amazing the 3D effects. This really kind of showed what the Atari 7800 was capable of. Would be interesting to see how the Nintendo version would have pulled it off. I'm sure they could, but it still would have been interesting. Okay, don't think I ever played this one. It's called Cracked. It's another light gun game. And the downsides about the downside about light guns is they never specifically bundled a light gun with the Atari 7800, and they never uh, sold it separately. So unless you could somehow get an XC light gun, uh, you were kind of out of luck. So you'd have to play, just like Crossbow, you could play with like a cursor around the screen, I'm imagining. Because, uh, yeah, there's probably the cursor right there. Crossbow had a cursor too where you could, uh, you know, direct your joystick in the, in the area where you want to shoot. But, of course, that gets real cumbersome when you're trying to do that. I, th I do think that Crossbow had a feature where uh, you could hit one button and it would move the cursor a little faster. I can't believe... I can't remember for sure, but here we go. Uh, cracked, it looks like you're shooting at roosters and the sewers without the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What fun is that? I don't know, but another poster inside, and it's new. I think uh, if you look here, you can kind of see this is like a sticker, I believe. On some, No, that one might be. I think, yeah, this is a sticker. They just slapped across the box, so you could peel that off if you wanted to. So I guess after a while, you could stop... Putting the stickers on, but most Atari 7800 games did not last that long. They only probably went through one printing uh, at a time. Here's one that was in the other box slot I got, one-on-one -on -one basketball. Dr. J or Larry Bird. Again, you could play one-on-one -on -one basketball against each other. Um, you just have this one screenshot the whole time. One-on-one, -on -one, you could kind of change the rules if you want to have, like, whoever scores gets to take the ball out again, or if you want to do the opposite, where if you score, the other person takes. It's kind of like playground rules. And you can actually bl uh, break the rim. If you jam it too many times, it'll shatter, come down, the janitor will come out, and he'll kind of mumble under his breath at you and push his little broom, and then magically, new glass will appear. So there you go. Larry Bird versus uh, Dr. J. You know, what was sad is at the time this game came out, Dr. J was not really a popular name. It was all about Michael Jordan. So, you know, it's a shame they couldn't have got someone who is current with the times, but still an interesting game, one-on-one -on -one basketball. All right. We haven't even got to the best games yet, but here's one of them. Back when I was buying games for my 7800, I usually would go to either uh, Myers, which is a Midwest chain similar to Walmart where you could buy your groceries and uh, durable goods at the same time like clothing and electronics or I'd go to Toys R Us 
And when the system was dying out and games like Map Mania came out, neither one was carrying them anymore. So this was pre-internet uh, times. The only way you could get some of the late releases in my area was to go to a Radio Shack. They had a big phone book of stuff you could order, a uh, phone book size catalog you could order from in the back. It was in the store, so you'd have to kind of mail order it in the store. That was the only way I could order these games, and I never really did because I didn't have the uh, uh, extra money. I usually had to buy games on the cheap. This is one of the last releases called Map Mania. I want to believe that it was based on a um, on an arcade game. Here you go, American Technos. Not sure if the name... I don't think it was called Map Mania in the arcade. But uh, let's see, you could do... You could be the famous Bruno the Sledge, Eye of Terror, Look of Death. You could uh, select your wrestlers. Uh, I think it was just one-on-one. -on -one. Pretty good graphics, you know, at least screenshot-wise. Uh, not too familiar with it. Uh, I don't know if it's as good... Let's see, wouldn't you know it, uh, you drew Blue, Bru, uh, Bruno the Sledge. Not sure if you uh, if you could select more than one these two guys, because they only show the same two guys. I like the referee wearing the nice little hat there, the beret-style hat, it looks like. But anyways, Map Mania, one of the later releases, a wrestling game. Uh, like the artwork, really cheesy, really 80s, even though that guy kind of looks like John Cena. And that guy kind of looks like uh, Shawn Michaels. So interesting there. I know John Cena wasn't popular at the time, but maybe they did take some inspiration from Shawn Michaels. But there you go, Map Mania Challenge, a wrestling game. Not highly regarded, but it is a rarer later release. All right, let's see what we got next. So far we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, all new. I uh, didn't eat, uh, actually remember that there was that many new games, but how cool is that? Ooh, here's a classic. We have Joust, the all-time arcade hit with the all-time arcade box art. Check that out. How do you make ostriches look vicious? I don't know, but whoever drew this box art did. Look at that. It even has a gap tooth that appears. And yet it still scares me. And look at that egg just flying there. This actually does a good job capturing the game Joust. A really, really fun arcade game. Touche. So there you go. Joust. Um, let's look inside real quick. Since it's actually... Okay, this is the, uh, I guess, the black and white edition. I guess they're trying to save on ink. Some cartridges have full color. Others have the silver with the kind of black and white, if you will. So nice looking cartridge there, a little something on there, a little bit of junk here and there, but it looks like we have our instructions too with our warranty card. So there you go, Joust for the 7800 Knights on Birdback. How can you go wrong with that? So there's Joust. Okay, let's move on. That was our first used game, and now we have another one. Xevious. This I had a lot of fun with back in the day. A very good shooter based on the Nameco arcade game. One thing the Atari 7800 did very well was port arcade game titles. They had really good ports of several things. Another black and white cartridge. I actually kind of like the black and white on this CVS. Makes it actually look almost a little better to me. I mean, I like the color, but this makes it look more terrifying, more like, wow, there's a lot on the line here. And uh, again, we got the manuals. You know, the 7800 manuals are not nearly as cool as the 2600. Typically, this is what you get. You get four pages if you include the cover and back. And the um, back has usually scoring details on it. And that's about it. So, not my favorite manuals, but you know what? Still some fun stuff in there. All right, let's see what we have next. I think I have 20 games total. And next up is Asteroids. I have never played the 7800 version. I enjoyed the uh, the 2600 version actually quite a bit, even though it's very blocky. And look how uh, how detailed those graphics are compared to the 2600. You can actually see the asteroids, like little divots and craters on them. So this will be one that I look forward to uh, trying out and comparing. Have another silver label. In space, they can't hear you blast asteroids, and they can't see color. 
So there you go, asteroids for the 7800. Time to start blasting, apparently, uh, purple asteroids. It kind of reminds me of the ooze guys from the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie, if anybody remembers that. And again, this is a complete game. This is a really nice lot. Even though I paid a, quite a bit for it, I th still think I got a good deal. This uh, one folds out. Nice Atari logo. Very iconic. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Ooh, Robotron 2084. Not sure how this is going to play. Uh, did not play this version before. Uh, wow, it looks like they actually opened it from the bottom. Don't know how they got the game out there, but I have not played this version. I believe you're supposed to play it with twin sticks, so uh, not sure. Let's take a look real here. I don't think you're going to be able to do it with uh, two, two sticks, so plug a controller let's see plug a controller in the left for one player and right for two so yeah it looks like you have to do it with one controller uh, it would be cool if they gave the feature to use both controllers I think they did that in uh, the 5200 version I can't remember but yeah this is Robotron and uh, they took the back and I I don't know how I'm going to get the cartridge out but I'll worry about that later Robotron 2084 this one's sealed we got jinx which is another late release i could not get this at toys r us because it came out too late and escape from planet jinx i believe this game uh is uh one of the few games actually only game that features some voice digitized voice in it for the 7800 and i think if i remember i actually owned this game i did buy a copy uh, later on during when eBay first started I found a copy haven't had it in a while though I think what you do is you kind of it's like a breakout but sideways you're kind of bouncing a ball if I remember correctly so um, There you go Jinx it's a later release uh, Not extremely rare though. You can get it fairly Reasonably priced I believe all right. Here's one that is not a late release. It is touchdown football based I believe on a computer game Action Pack 3D football, yes, it's not really 3D, it's just sideways views. And there's your options, player versus player, player versus computer, or if you're really lame, you can watch the computer play itself. I don't know anyone who ever enjoyed that mode. I don't know why they ever included that on video game systems except to display them. But some games, especially back in the day, you could let the computer play itself, and I, I guess maybe if you uh, have a problem with gambling and need to bet on something... But then you should seek help. So there is football. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. What was that six? Six on six players. So there you go. Never played it. I believe it's the only a football game for the uh, Atari 7800. And you'll find that a lot with the Atari 7800. That when it comes to the sports games like Map Mania, that most of the sport games only had one one game uh, that fits the category. So if you liked uh, basketball, you had to play one on one. If you liked wrestling, you had to wait for Matt Mania. Well, there was a third party for the 2600, but as far as 7800 goes, if you want hockey, hat trick. That that just is a that's that you were just stuck with that. You didn't have the options that some other systems did. All right, but you could always do winter games, and I like this a lot better than summer games. You there's that iconic art uh, that I saw. I remember. Um, some other PC games had this. I believe the same company, Epics, made a PC game of G.I. Joe. I was a G.I. Joe fan, and I always wished I could play that game, but it was for a computer, and I didn't own one as a kid. So, Winter Games. Now I get to go for the gold in the Winter Games. Super Game Cartridge. This is printed on. It's not a sticker. I think only if it says new is it a sticker. Let's look inside. Um, we have warranty card. I should really send this in. Um... We have a manual. This one looks a little bit bigger than most, but tells you the event. So we got bobsled, ski jump, biathlon. That's really fun. And speed, excuse me, speed skating. So biathlon, you actually do this cross country um, skiing and you stop at these targets. But the deal is if you are really pushing yourself skiing, your heart rate will be up. And the cursor that aims at the targets, it's, it's, it's always going from the top to bottom like this. If you, were, if you were doing a steady pace, it goes slower. But 
if you were going really fast, it would go like that. It made it really hard hard to hit this little dot in the middle. So there you go, Winter Games. Um, let's look at the cartridge, see if it'll... Oh, it's deep down in there. I don't know. If, oh, there we go. Oh, this is a nice one. Full color. I like that. Look at that. Nice glossy. Looks cool. Yeah. That looks good. You can show your friends who have a Nintendo Winter Games. That at least looks cool. All right. Let's see what else we got. Oh, here is a rarer one. One I've never played on the 7800. One of the games I was looking for. There's that new... Yeah, it's a sticker. You can kind of see it. doesn't shine with the box. It, it's a sticker, but... Akari Warriors, check that box heart out. Look at that. I don't know what's going on there. If he has a, I guess it's a flame. It looks kind of like his uh, chest is cut there, but it goes beyond his jacket. I'm not sure, but he is just ready to go. Looks like he wrapped some toilet paper around. Is that the copter from Super Huey? It might be. So Akari Warriors, um, uh, two could play together. That looks like they updated their box art a little bit here look at that three screenshots if you notice some of the older games that only had one some of the mid uh, later releases had two but now they're going three they're learning authentic arcade action uh, look forward to playing this one it is complete this is a one of those games that are actually kind of hard to find on the 7800 manual let's see how they did these old manuals it looks pretty much more or less the same as before they didn't fancy up the manuals but uh, it's still still cool to get. Let's see if I can get the cartridge out. A nice full color cartridge. Really like that. Looks good. Yeah, one of the harder games to find. I look forward to playing it. Never did. Uh, it's kind of weird. You'd get Nintendo Envy if you were an Atari 7800 owner. And probably if you're a Master System owner too. And at least in the States. And it was nice when you're like, oh, look. A game I could play on the Nintendo but never could before I can finally play on the 7800 so it's cool to see Akari Warriors look forward to checking that one out someday soon here's another one Commando again like Akari Warriors this was also released on the uh, the NES but you couldn't play this until many years later I believe let's see what year we got 1989 uh, looks like the box was open near the bottom so nice full color label this is another one of those kind of rare games uh, check out the manual real quick they also released Commando for the uh, 2600 too so they're just a four page manual nothing fancy manual wise but yeah this this and Akari Warriors two games that were on the NES very common on the NES. You could get them really cheap, but if you want the 7800 version, get ready to pay a little bit. So, this and Akari Warriors help make this purchase worth it, along, along with some of these other games that I'll be digging up in just a minute. Alright. Ace of Aces. Fun game. It is. I did own this. It is a flight simulator. They really needed to show more more pictures on this game because there's a lot to do you have to fly on a map you have to get to the right altitude this really brought uh, computer experience to the 7800 you could drop bombs you, there's a bomb hatch and you could if you're low enough close to a river or like a railroad or whatever the hatch would open up and you would aim and actually try and drop bombs while maintaining your altitude if you're up high you could actually look to your left to your right and forward looking at planes flying all around you quite actually advanced for the 7800 really showed what it could do bottom is kind of stuck here so um you know what there we go that got it all right so here is the the cartridge nice full color this was a fun game took a little bit of understanding it's, it unlike a lot of atari games you actually had to know what you were doing so the manual came in very handy um and speaking of which here is the manual and this one actually has quite a bit of pages look at that and this is all basically all those pictures you're seeing are screenshots from the game and it's showing you everything you can do and that is that that manual is more like uh 12 13 pages this is a longer manual so definitely needed it though and here's the poster that came with the games that were labeled the Atari Advantage so you if you collect five games you get a t-shirt I did this if collect uh, 15 cartridges you could send in for a game 
and also if you collect 25 games you could purchase uh, these systems at a reduced rate and if you look right there there is the European style uh, joypad that came with the 7800 I want to get one of those one of these days made it a lot more easier there is the light gun that you could play the games with but I don't know if it was easy if you could buy it separately but so unless you had both how could you play the light gun games on 7800 you just have to use the uh, cursor and there is the disk drive you could also win a trip to California visit um, you could visit a uh, the factory or the whatever the office and there's a nice little poster with all games and the, and the other side has some cool art I might have to open this up one day and take a deeper look at it but for now let's just put it to the side so we can keep going all right looks like I got two more games unless one fell in the box both of them are kind of rare never played this one scrapyard dog it's a platformer which is very rare very rare as far as a platformer where you go through different this might actually be the one of the few I think Kung Fu Master you know would count but one of the few platformers where you can actually go through levels and maybe face a boss or something at the end again three shots it's a later release a full color full color uh, label there looks very very nice that guy has a very huge nose it's about as big as one of the dog's cheeks Okay, so that's cheesy art. I don't know about that. That might go on some of the worst art as far as the Atari goes. Maybe it's so bad it's good. Warranty card. There's a manual. Seen better days. Scrapyard dog. I look forward to playing this. Never played it. They also made a version for the Atari Lynx. And not sure if this is the last one. I think it is. This is the one I was really after. And yes, I owned this back in the day. Not when it first came out, but later on I bought it, I think, off eBay or something. When I recollected the 7800, this is like the third time I've collected the 7800. I've had now a few systems that I bought and sold over time. Ninja Golf. Actually, there's two golf games. The other one's actually rare. It's called Mean 18. But Ninja Golf, this is a great game. This is something that you could only find on ah, the 7800. Look at that. You're fighting sharks. It's golf. It's ninja. It's sharks. Two out of three ain't bad. Don't care much for golf, but when it comes to ninja golf, really like that. So you'd hit your ball, and then when you would uh, run from point A to point B to get to your ball, you'd have to fight these things. And when you get to the hole, when you get to the green to putt or whatever, you could actually fight these monsters, if I remember correctly. Very, very, very fun game. This might be the best game on the 7800. Check it out, guys. Atari does what Nintendo. You can't get Ninja Golf on your Nintendo. No, you need the Pro System to play Ninja Golf. Yeah, so there you go. Ninja Golf. Very, very fun game. I hope it holds up. I'm guessing it still does. Yeah, love that box art. Absolutely love it. Love the nunchuck hanging out. I wonder if they kept that for Europe because, like, I know Ninja Turtles, they had to stop using nunchucks when they went to Europe. But, yeah, Ninja golf playing the game let's see some of the items you can get throwing stars magic shield revitalization potions um restoration free man warp you know you have a good golf game when it lets you warp and gives you throwing stars that's a good golf game right there that just made golf a whole lot more interesting all right let's see if i have anything else oh oh yep one more game hiding had this in the other one, Dark Chambers. Actually, I had the 2600 version in the other unboxing I was doing. And this is the 7800 version. Again, this is kind of like Gauntlet for the 7800. Never played it. Looked good. One of those games that I looked at for years and thought, huh, it might be interesting to play, but never did. Has some very nice box art there. A lot going on. And, uh... And then and the manual there it looks like usually they're black and white there I see a lot of red shades and looks like in there I guess that's the colors they were using the black the kind of pink red shades and the I guess I could use the red save on ink or whatever but still game I look forward to playing um, yeah so anyways that is the lot I got 20 games several new all all of them were complete I mean how often do you find a lot like that with 20 games exclusively for the 7800? No duplicates, some new, everyone's complete, and it's got Ninja Golf. You just don't get 
lots like that anymore, except I did. All right, well, I want to thank Gizmo Duck. Gizmo, thanks for uh, coming. Gizmo gives us a, 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 well, not a thumb up, but a finger up. He approves. So we will be checking out some of these games later. Hey, if you like this video, would you go ahead and like it on YouTube and subscribe if you enjoy retro uh, videos like this. Also, you might want to subscribe if you think any of these games are interesting. I might be doing some reviews on them in the near future. So thanks again for checking me out. And remember, drive safely. Have a good night.